Jensen Ackles, or better known as Soldier Boy, was he blasting gear to get to his transformation as what we know as Soldier Boy from the boys? Or is this physique naturally obtainable? Well, in this video, I'm going to break down the facts and make sure that you understand what is capable naturally and not, and how you can replicate results just like this in as little as six months. Now, if you don't know who Soldier Boy is, you've been sleeping under a rock. The Boys is a beautiful Amazon series. Season four has been a little bit iffy, but for the most part, it's been a pretty good show. And one of the main headlines in season three was Soldier Boy. Now, Soldier Boy himself is supposed to be a superhero who's pretty much indestructible. However, there is some chance that he might have been destructed in the series, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Jensen Ackles, I believe that's how you say his name. It's, it's pretty difficult to put into words. Actually looked like this very, very early on in his career when he was playing in Supernatural. Trust me, there was a lot of people freaking out about how good this physique was back then, which still blows my mind. This is almost, almost a decade ago at this point. But he went and leveled up from this all the way to this. Wrong photo. Not the right photo. All the way to this for Soldier Boy. Now, I know this isn't like the most detail-oriented picture in the world, but the dude has massive traps, peaked shoulders, a notable chest. He's a lot bigger, a lot more manly, especially compared to just a few months before this where he looks literally like this. Oh. Oh. And believe it or not, he's actually 44 years old and his traps and delts are looking like this compared to when he was younger looking like this. So what has he done that's so unique that made him build a much better physique with a, let's be honest, way more filled out upper body in an older age, which is just crazy. You usually see people degrade as they get older. Most people just turn to shit. They stop trying and get much fatter and less muscular by the time they're 40 at all. So is he taking TRT? Is he doing something to get a physique that looks like this? I mean, is there growth hormone involved? Is there, we've talked about Joe Rogan. We've, we've talked about all these different athletes and other people using testosterone, growth hormone. We've talked about Joe Rogan. We've talked about other superstars. Is he using it? Well, I'll be honest and say that I don't actually know. I would probably argue in this case, no, and that there's actually one big change that he has done compared to any of those things. And this change is going to upset a lot of you who depend on things like gear to get results. I believe that what he did was simply lift really heavy things and be in a caloric surplus for a good amount of time. That's it, I spilled the beans, this video is basically over, but if you want to stick around, I'll explain what that really means. Now essentially when people try to work out, they start in the gym even at the highest of levels in superstar fandom, they start in the gym and don't necessarily do much with their diet. They expect the training to get them most of the results because that's just what you do when you want to build muscle. But the reality is there's a lot of steps that kind of supersede the training in which will perform much better in terms of measurable results in lean mass growth over a certain period of time. For instance, we want to look at things like eating and eating in a calorie surplus. Now I know what you're saying, Colton, I don't want to get fat that's ridiculous i don't want to get the puffy face and the puffy man boobs and all that stuff and i get it trust me i'm the last guy that likes to bulk but you can do this and be very very lean and still having a very attractive physique so to achieve a physique like his in that amount of time about six months what i would do is realistically find where your maintenance caloric intake is so generally speaking, most males will be somewhere around 2,500 calories to 3,000 calories if your body weight is quite normal. Once you've found your maintenance calories through hopefully tracking, you want to make sure that a good portion of your dietary intake of calories is coming from protein and then distribute the rest through carbohydrates and fats. I've talked about this in a long series before on this channel, so if you need more of an in-depth, I will make sure to link that somewhere up here. So now that you found your maintenance calories and you split up your macronutrients and hopefully you're eating whole and healthy foods, the next step is just to increase those calories by about 250 to 500 calories per day. Now you're still doing the same workouts. You're still doing cardio. You're still doing everything that you should to be a healthy human being. You're just adding a little bit more calories. This will enable better recovery and quicker adaptation to the things that you're doing already in the gym. Now to really take things to the next level, what you're going to want to do is also put food around your workouts, specifically carbohydrates. If I was you eating to build muscle, I would aim for one meal in the morning with a higher protein intake than generally most of the other 
other meals throughout the day. One meal before my workouts, which is probably gonna be following the first meal. So the first meal in and of itself is that meal before the workout. And in that meal, I'm gonna have a little bit more carbohydrates than I would all the other meals. I'm going to go resistance train quite hard, training close to, if not to failure on specific body parts, usually aiming for upper body and then lower body on a different day. Usually that's the method of madness that I go for where I'm training upper body on Monday and then Tuesday I'll train lower body, Wednesday I'll train upper body. You get the point. Then post-workout, about ideally an hour after your workout has finished, you're gonna wanna get another meal in. This will be something that is also quite high in protein compared to your other meals throughout the day because it is when you're most devoid of it and most catabolic in terms of actually having amino acids free flowing in blood. And you're also in conjunction going to wanna have a good deal of carbohydrates with this meal. Now then after that, every three to five hours, you're gonna wanna have another meal. These will have a considerable amount of protein, somewhere above 30 grams but not really over 60 grams and lesser amounts of carbohydrate than you were to have in that post or pre-workout meal. And that's about it. As long as you're hitting about one gram per pound of body weight in protein, ideally I'd like to aim for a little bit more for most people. You have a good deal of carbohydrates around your workout and enough fats to create a physiologically normal state for you you're gonna gain some serious weight. Now, of course, you're thinking to yourself, Colton, there's a lot more to this. What about the training? Well, the soldier boy physique isn't gonna require a ton of training. You don't have to go ham in the paint and train every single day, blowing yourself out, fatiguing yourself, and then just completely burning out and never going to the gym again. What you need to do is literally think about that upper lower split I had talked about before. And think about it in a context where you train five times per week. Let's just say on Monday you train upper body. So you're doing something like chest, back, arms, and on Tuesday you're training lower. So you'll be doing something like quads and hamstrings. Wednesday you'll be doing upper again. So again, chest and back, and then some variation of arms or extremities. Thursday you might take a break. Friday you back to train again and you do lower body. And then Saturday upper body. And then Sunday is your break again. And you just repeat that. If you have enough volume somewhere around six to eight sets per muscle group per week, you're golden and you're gonna make an exceptional amount of progress as long as you're eating in a caloric surplus and you're training with relatively good amounts of volume that has high effort sets. Well, you have just built a physique that 90% of people want, but they'll never get. Now give yourself a huge time horizon to do these things over, something like six months to a year. <laughs> And your physique might just turn into something that you are shocked by. There is one big caveat to this, which is unfortunate. If you have too much fat mass before starting this process, you are going to want to cut down some weight pretty significantly. And essentially what you're doing there is everything I just said, but in reverse. You're going to find your maintenance calories, and then you're going to subtract by about 500 to 250 per day. That should net you about a pound loss per week, and then keep the same training, cardio, and everything else. You should do this until you're striving for somewhere close to single digit body fat percentages. Then you'll have plenty of room to maximize your massing phase or the point at which you're in a caloric surplus. Woo! Yeah, baby! And all those delicious calories are gonna go straight to your biceps. And this requires absolutely zero grams of gear. You can just rock and roll all natty status, bro, and get results that I think most people will oogle at, honestly that's even a fucking word. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is our friend Soldier Boy natty? Is he natty? Was this transformation completely natural or am I just making shit up because I don't know what I'm talking about? Only you can decide in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe for the next video.